Good afternoon. Welcome to Facebook Live. Wes Moss, Bryn Sims. Welcome. Uh, awful lot to talk about today. Bryn, did you watch the debate last night? I did. Wasn't it boring. underwhelming? Yes, <laughs> boring. extremely boring. <laughs> the uh, We want to talk about how Karen Handel and John Ossoff last night debate really of the year. Call it the debate of the century because there's been no political race that has raised more money than this for, for a U.S. Congress seat. We're here in the, we're actually here in the 6th District, uh, in, where we live, or where, where our office is, right. and we're very close to, the, we're really on the border, but Georgia's district with, uh, the Georgia 6th District with Tom Price, he has now moved to Washington. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is now uh, incumbent upon Georgians to vote for a new congressperson, and this race has gotten to be so heated uh, and more money has come into the state, and the statistics are like 95% of the money coming into the Ossoff campaign, supposedly. From California? 3,000 miles away, yeah. as Karen Handel said mm, last night. A little fishy. Uh, <laughs> a little fishy. <laughs> and that's that's where we stand. It's, it, but it's gotten to be over a $40 million race. That's crazy. Have you so. seen any other commercials, Brent? Tons. Uh, Radio commercials, TV commercials, it's all over the place. It's, it's almost all there is. Can you yeah. recall your favorite commercial? No, I hate all of them, so I just mute it or turn on the radio switch station. So Some of them are even a little bit confusing. I'll get to one yeah. in a second here. But uh, Handel, uh, last night I think the biggest controversy, and this is what I'd love to hear from the audience, and again, this always goes back to economics. We are here to make sure that we're investing money in the right way, the best way, helping families get to retirement, right? The reason we've been focusing on politics lately is that it's such a giant part of the conversation, and it's really dominated markets to some extent. It hasn't yeah. really hurt the stock market all that much, but so far in the last year, it hasn't helped an awful lot either. I think Mallory wants you to stand up and smile. I'm sitting as tall as I can. <laughs> okay. the, uh, so with that, we want to talk about probably the biggest, let's call it, maybe, maybe it was a mistake, maybe it wasn't, I, we, we don't know for sure, but there was a conversation last night during the debate, and this again gets back to economics, and I want to hear your opinion on this, uh, about... A, really, the question was about a minimum wage. Do you yes. support a minimum wage? Which is a giant economic question. It's kind of philosophical. You can argue both sides. Mm -hmm. But it's a political hot button. And the, 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 the last night, Karen Handel said that she did not, does not support a livable wage. That well, wasn't the question. Yeah. I, I, was it a slip yeah, up? I think so. So, do you? So, what's your, what are your thoughts? I mean, again, we, we try to be pr relatively neutral here on politics. We're not trying to support either agenda. We're here to figure out both agendas if it really impacts the economy, it impacts earnings, which is impacts the market and interest mm -hmm. rates, and that's really what we care about as investors. But last night in this debate was WSB Television hosted. I thought Justin Farmer did an awesome job too. Right. Uh, he stayed very neutral. He tried to really get the answers out of candidates. He, he pressed them. He said he, a couple of times he went back and back to get specifics. Mm -hmm. But what about the, the the minimum wage first? I mean, philosophically, what what is just your thought? Philosophically, I don't think it should be a livable wage because I think it's. I usually think of you know teenagers working these jobs or people as a step to get to another level. But that's well, you don't think it should be livable, or you don't think it should be a minimum? I don't think it should be livable. Livable, meaning that so you don't. You shouldn't live off of this type of wage. It should be a, a stepping stone job. Oh, okay. So you That's, don't. So you do kind of agree with Karen Handel, right? Then. Wow. Okay. See, you might need to be. You might need to help her out in the next debate. We'll see. We'll see. Because I think that's a really good point. Does a t so if we impose a really the question is about a minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And I guess here's what I'd ask you as the audience: if you support a minimum wage. Uh, we'd like a heart. Uh, if you support a, if you don't support, you think a minimum wage imposed by the government on businesses is a bad idea, then an angry face would be would be great too. And we might get a lot of angry thinking faces. of the small businesses that will be shut down or seriously hurt with a forced minimum wage. Forced minimum wage. So that's the issue here: is that you now instead of if we impose a minimum wage in America. Mm -hmm. And, and which is a different term than livable. Right. They're different. Minimum wage is a federally mandated wage uh, that will say that all employees have to be paid at least X. Could be 15, could be $16 an hour, right? Mm -hmm. But what if you're a business that has, 
lots of labor, and the labor cost is extensive, and and it makes more sense for the business to pay eleven dollars or twelve dollars an hour. And if you bump that up to fifteen dollars an hour, yeah, if you have one or two employees, it might not be any big deal. But if you have a hundred or five hundred, it could be the difference between Life staying death, staying yeah. open or or uh, going out doing well mm-hmm. or, or going out of business. So. The, the question of a minimum wage is really a question about does government get into the, the inner workings of, of every company on a very broad basis when companies are very independent and individual in different industries? Can you have a blanket umbrella rule, everybody has to be $15 an hour or t- $20 an hour, whatever the number may end up being, or do you let the market and each industry and each, and each business dictate Determine that? Determine what they so, and again, so you, you believe in what again? In an actual, well, not government mandated, and then I can't talk, mm-hmm. not government mandated living wage or minimum wage. Not government not, mandated, okay. Not, so yeah. I, I think what happened, I think what Karen Handel meant last night, and again, this is the hottest topic on Twitter, and there were, mm-hmm. there were 40, 50,000 tweets about this. It really, she, she said she didn't support a livable wage. So technically, and people get paid a lot of money to come up with how to spin the meaning of a word. There was a guy named Frank Lutz. He wrote a book called Words That Work. He was the guy that took what it used to be the estate tax. So this is the tax that you, your family has to pay when they inherit money at a certain level. And he, he, he changed the vernacular around that word. He, he started calling it the... And then he worked for the Bush administration, and when he did this, he called it, he started calling it the death tax. So, so voters started to understand that, wait a minute, this is a tax on my death. I don't like that. They didn't really care about the estate tax. But when right. Frank Lutz turned the conversation into the death tax, all of a sudden everybody cared. So the, unfortunately, I think, for how, what, what Karen Handel said last night is that Frank Lutz couldn't have come up with a better word to spin that she to spin against the minimum wage she instead said and she may not believe in government mandated wages but instead she said i don't i don't think people should have a livable wage meaning that to some extent insinuating that it's okay for people to live in poverty and i don't know if she really meant it that way i don't think so i think i think she misspun it you think she misspoke misspoke maybe it was a giant mistake but and leave it up to the internet to, to tell you what's a mistake or not. Or leave oh, it up yeah. to Twitter. And I think it was 99% of the interaction last night was Twitter-based, and it was a real mess when, when that came out. I mean, I, we, the, my Twitter app was pinging and pinging and pinging all over um, this, what seemed to be a little bit of a gap. Yeah. So who, you, you don't want to say who you're voting for, do you? Not really. I okay. mean, we're not, we don't do politics. I'm in the here. district, so I, I do have to vote. So here's the other thought is that next, and here's the other reason we're bringing this up is that, I, again, I, I work for WSB Radio as well and have done Money Matters now. I'm in my ninth year on the weekend from 9 to 11 a.m. live every Sunday morning. Little plug. Well, it's a giant plug, number one. Number two, it's because I hosted a candidate debate, mm-hmm. moderated the 18 candidates when Handel and Ossoff were still in the primary. And now it's just the it's just the two of them. Karen Handel has agreed to a debate on WSB Radio next Thursday, which is June fifteenth. Interestingly, even though Ossoff said that he would he would uh, commit to fifty debates or mm-hmm. ma- however many she wanted, he has that still not committed to this debate. Interesting. I even talked to a reporter of the AJC today who checked with the camp, and they still haven't committed, even through the Atlanta Journal Constitution. So here we are, WSB Radio. I've already moderated it one time in a, in a very neutral way, mm-hmm. uh, and we still haven't gotten an answer from the Ossoff camp. Now, Karen Handel's camp has said yes. We're, we're, we're in for the debate. It's been announced. She put a press release out about it. It's next Thursday. It would be next Thursday the 15th. but. Yeah. But, but still no commitment from the Ossoff camp. So we're, we're kind of, to some extent we're in limbo. But if, if that is going to happen and gets confirmed, of course, we'll tell our Facebook Live audience. What would you like me to ask Karen Handel? What would you like me to ask uh, John Ossoff? How about, what would you like me to ask? And I'd love your comments here. And again, heart, if you think, uh, if you agree with having a minimum or with, with having a minimum wage, angry face, if you think a minimum wage 
is not a good idea, too much go government overreach. Right. What should I ask these two if they, if in fact they fully commit next Thursday like they? I would ask Karen Handel if she meant to say living wage. Ask her if that was a little messed up on her part or if, she, if there's another part of it that she's not explaining yet because she didn't get into policy too much like Ossoff did, so that might be a good chance to go back at policy. You're right. That was another issue with the debate, uh, that, that there wasn't that much policy, at least from, I didn't hear as much from Karen mm -hmm. Handel. So. Another thing is that the, the audience, you know, what did you think about that? No audience is just kind of awkward, no interaction, no oohs, ahs, or laughs, nothing. It was just kind of... Like a vacuum. Yeah. If you were in the state of Georgia and you would be interested in joining us for that debate in a live session, which would be really interesting, yeah. if this happens, I'd love to, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we could potentially get you on the list. No promises because I'm not sure how much room we have available. Well, even if will, you know, confirm. So even if he will be there, I still think it's a, it's a decent chance. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any betting odds on it. Maybe, maybe, maybe we've been talking about um, Trump, odds. Trump odds, election odds, impeachment odds. Maybe there there could be a, 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 a question or a, um, a bet. Will Ossoff commit to the WSB radio debate hey. on the UK betting site Ladbrokes? <laughs>